He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Voices from the Lord. Greetings. I'm Pastor Anna Lee, and I'll be sharing our devotion for today. The title of my devotion is Why Go to Church? COVID-19 has changed all of our lives. It has especially changed the way we do church. We've been going to church from the comfort of our own homes, dressed in comfortable clothes in front of our computers. It's been three months now since we have seen each other in person. And some of us may be wondering if it's even necessary to gather together for church. We're wondering why we should make the effort to go to church now that the restrictions are being lifted. I want to make the case for attending church. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that some of us may feel uncomfortable with being around others, but I am talking about the understanding that attending church is important and that we need to remember that. We can't forsake being together again. It's interesting to me that Pastor Steve used the verse I'm about to share in this devotion in his sermon on Sunday. I think the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us something. In Hebrews 10:25, we read, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. This verse is referring to the return of the Lord. As we see that day approaching, we need to meet together and encourage each other. We are the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And he will return for us soon. We have already been through the engagement stage of our marriage to the Lamb. Jesus has paid the dowry, or the mohar, as it is called in the Jewish tradition. The mohar was paid to show the value of the bride. Jesus paid it with his own blood and gave his life for his bride. And he has gone to prepare a place in his father's house for us. Just as in the Jewish weddings of biblical times, the groom went back to his father's house after the engagement contract was signed to prepare a room so he could bring his bride back there. When the father saw that the room was ready, he would tell, tell the groom to go get his bride. Only the father knew when that day had finally come. Jesus will come for us, his bride, and only the father knows when that day will be. But it will happen. In the meantime, we the bride are to be preparing for the wedding. We are to adorn ourselves with the jewels of holiness and make sure our garments are pure white. And we are also to adorn the bride of Christ with the jewels of worship and fellowship and evangelism. This waiting time is for us to attend the bride, the church, and make sure that we are ready for the return of our groom. In my readings lately, I came across an article by Michelle Lazarek, the wife of a pastor. In it, she shares 10 reasons why you should come to church every week. Let me share them with you. Number one, so you can enjoy community. There is a reason why scripture refers to members of the church as brothers and sisters. As I was growing up, we called everyone in church brother or sister because we were the children of God. Church is not just a place to go on Sundays, but rather a gathering of people who have committed to walking their spiritual journeys interdependent, not independently. When you are in, in church, we all feel the void. Number two, so you can use your gifts. God has gifted each of us not only with natural talents, but also with spiritual gifts that, when used, build up the church body in unique ways. If you have never taken a spiritual gifts inventory, please do. 
Go online to find a spiritual gift survey and find out what the Lord has gifted you with to bless his bride. If you still don't know what your gifts are, find someone who can affirm the gifts they see in you. Maybe they can be used in an existing ministry, or maybe we are missing an important ministry in our church that you can create yourself. The possibilities are endless. Number three, so you can discover your purpose. God has a plan for all of us, but finding out what that plan is can be easier said than done. As members of a church get to know us, they can speak words of encouragement and affirmation into our lives. They can help us navigate through the muddy waters we call life. Seeking wise counsel is one of the many benefits of being a part of a church. You can know what God's purpose is for your life. Number four, so you can find connection. Some people are exactly like us, while others are just the opposite. In church, we get the chance to meet and connect with people we wouldn't have met otherwise. It helps us work on making ourselves a better person because of these relationships. We can connect with people in a unique, unique way and discover things about ourselves we would have never had the opportunity to do otherwise. Number five, so you can worship. Worship can happen any time of the day and any day of the week. We can worship in the car, in our room, or when we're feeling down. But there is nothing like getting together in a room full of other worshipers and singing our hearts out to God with others who share that same desire. Our lives are enriched when we worship with others, and we can't do that sitting at home by ourselves. Number six, so you can learn the word. Do you take the time to study God's word through concordances and other Bible study tools on a regular basis? Probably not. But when we go to church on Sunday, we get the opportunity to hear the word preached in ways that help us understand it better and in unique ways we may not have seen if we were studying it on our own. Number seven, so you can participate in missions. When we regularly attend church, we get to share the good news with people to whom the name of Jesus is foreign. We can help support missionaries and know that the gospel is being shared in places we can't go to. Number eight, so you can practice generosity. When we give of our finances, we may not think of how far reaching our money goes. Imagine getting to heaven and meeting people we never met on earth, whose lives were touched because we gave to a missions fund or to the general fund. Our dollars not only sustain the church, but can create an impact on others' lives. Number nine, so you can forge lifelong friendships. Scripture references church members as the body of Christ. Once you make friends at church, you are forever bonded to them through your desire to follow Jesus. There is a special connection you share because of the Savior. Who can't use another friend or two in our lives? Number 10, so you can enjoy food. Last of all, the food. Potlucks and fellowship after service bring a sense of coziness and family like nothing else. Coming to church with a dish we learned from our grandmother and having the opportunity to, to share it with the people we love not only lets us practice hospitality, but also share the intimacy that comes from sitting around a table eating and getting to know those around us. And well, who doesn't love a free meal? Some of you may remember Alice Stramp. She went to be with the Lord about three years ago now. After inviting her, she came to our church depressed and lonely. Her family was gone. She had no spouse or children or extended family. When she visited, she stayed because she loved the fellowship and the potlucks. She actually would take a plate home and bring it to a friend's house and share the meal with them on a Sunday evening. It made a big impact on her life to know that she was welcomed and that she eventually 
she was welcomed to the point that she eventually became baptized in water and gave her life to the Lord. We probably won't be having a potluck at our church for a while, but when we do, let's join in and fellowship with each other once again. We can't forsake assembling together in these last days. We all need encouragement. We need to pray together, hear God's word to us, worship and sing, and remind each other that each of us is important to the bride of Christ, the church. You are important to us, and we miss you when you aren't in church. So as we gather together soon, Let's make the commitment to obey what the Spirit tells us in Hebrews and be faithful until our bridegroom returns. Amen. Voices from the Loft is a ministry of the Loft Wesleyan Church in Hillsborough, New Jersey. For more information about our church, please visit us at our website, www.theloftwc.org.